You know what's crazy? And they have to recognize this. Some places do not allow paralytics because of their city, their state, because of their specialty to use paralytics as RSI. And so when they intubate, they just sedate and induce a coma, a GCS of three, if adequately sedated. But adequately sedating doesn't mean that you're gonna stop their, uh, their gag reflex. And it could be a minimal gag reflex or none at all, or a horrible one that would induce vomiting. Remember, the patient's not paralyzed. Once you've paralyzed the diaphragm and the esophagus, they should not actively vomit. They'll be sedated and that'll prevent the vomiting. But if you're gonna intubate, you have to sneak in like a cheetah, slowly and singing the song Despacito, and waiting for the course to open and close, open and close, and then feed the tube in. And then have to sedate them, and hopefully your hemodynamics allows that. That makes sense? Very different when you paralyze the patient. And if you can't paralyze them in the ICU in the pre-hospital setting, good luck. A lot of good luck. It's not fair. But if you sedate only, there's a chance of failure. And you have to bag them again, set them up, get pre oxygenate them, and drive as fast as possible. Call someone else to help you who's allowed to paralyze the patient. Don't let them die. 